In today's video, we're going to be talking about locking up our silver and gold in a safe. Why many of us think that this is a good idea and why a small group of us don't think it's a good idea. And we're also going to be taking a look at what I believe just might be the greatest possible safe. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great, and enjoying freedom. It's a great day to have a great day. Today, I wanted to talk about silver and also gold, but I mainly wanted to talk about safes for our silver and our gold. Some of the pros, some of the cons. I want to run through a couple of different brands. I want to talk about some of my opinions on different safes and the best way to keep them as well hidden as possible. We're going to get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new. Make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there. Go check it out. The link will be in the description. And if you want to get some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel, I would really, really, really appreciate it. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. But today is... Tuesday, July 13th, 2021. The current spot price as I'm recording the video is $26.03, a red day for silver, down 18 cents. And the spot price of gold is $1,807.30, a slight green day for gold, up 80 cents. And of course, the gold to silver ratio is in the 68 to 69 to 1 range. Of course, these numbers are as I'm filming the video, not as I'm editing, so head on down to the comments and let me know the date and time you're viewing the video and what the current spot price is for you. I'm always curious. But in today's video, I wanted to talk about safes. Storing your silver and your gold in a safe. Locking them up to keep them hidden and protected and safe. And worst case scenario, if someone wanted to take them, Hopefully, they would have an incredibly difficult time doing so, or even better, a near impossible time doing so. Now, there's a lot of people out there who do not like the idea of a safe. There are a lot of people out there who think that simply owning a safe is going to make you a target. I personally disagree with that, but I do 100% understand where they're coming from. Now, the people who don't believe in safes typically have a different way of storing or hiding their money. They don't just leave it out on the kitchen table because they don't want to use a safe. No, they do a variety of different things. Some of them are firm believers in hiding things in plain sight. And by that, I don't mean, once again, on the kitchen table, I'm talking about hiding them in a place where you wouldn't even think to look. See, if you go into somebody's house and you see a nice big safe all out in the open, you're probably going to automatically assume that there's something of value inside. Maybe it's money, maybe it's gold, maybe it's jewelry, maybe it's a Rolex, maybe it's expensive camera equipment, maybe it's important documents, whatever the case may be. If you see a safe all out in the open, your mind is probably automatically going to go to, okay, they have a safe for a reason. That's not exactly hiding in plain sight. And I think the safe should be well hidden. We're going to get into that momentarily. But hiding in plain sight without using a safe at all could mean a couple different things. I mean, for example, I've heard of people storing gold on the inside of their wall. As intense as that may sound, as extreme as that may be, that is something that people actually do. Now, it's not something that I do. It's not something that I can really see myself doing. But... Technically, it's an option. It's not a horrible idea. It's a place to hide them. I don't think many would, people would think to check the insides of your wall. Something else people do, and this is something that I've really never agreed with, but I can respect it. There are people who bury their silver and gold underground. On a property that belongs to them, of course. At least I'd hope so. They bury their silver. Now, this is something that I always thought was a little bit too overdramatic for me. I mean, worst case scenario in a bug out situation, if I need to flee, the last thing I would want to do is say, oh, God, where's my shovel? And then go run out into the backyard and dig up my buried treasure. I would personally really rather not do that. 
But the people who actually bury their silver and gold on the underground, I'm sure they've weighed out the pros and the cons. I'm pretty sure most of these scenarios have crossed their minds and they came to their own conclusion and that just happens to be what works best for them. It's not what would work best for me, so that's not what I do. Now, I also want to include a clip. It's about maybe seven or eight minutes long. I stole it from myself during my last VIP Club live stream. I'll leave the link in the description in case anybody wants to watch the full live stream. It was almost four hours long, and if you become a VIP Club member, I also do monthly giveaways, weekly live streams, daily silver and gold deal alerts, and much more, so link in the description. But this is a clip. We were having a bit of a conversation regarding safes, and I thought it was important enough to clip and put in this video right here, and I also did a little bit of an overview of this safe that I really want to get one day. It is far too expensive for me to be able to afford at the moment, but it's definitely a goal of mine to get one day. I'm also going to be weighing out some more pros and cons, and I'm going to be talking about the best way, at least in my opinion, to hide a safe. So without any further ado, here's the clip, and then I'm going to come right back and talk a little bit more about safes. Here we go. We spoke about safes two weeks ago. I bought one this last week 298 pounds two hour fire rating internal times approx 12 12 12 inches on the journey to fill it up that is awesome that's also that's a heavy safe 290 pounds empty wow that's pretty good What's the brand, if you don't mind me asking? 298 pounds. And, you know, li like I said in that stream from two weeks ago, something else you can do, if you want to give it even more weight, you can toss in, you know, I don't know if you have room for it, if it's 12 by 12 by 12. I don't know if you, I, I don't know if a 45 pound weight plate is too big. It might be. But you should have no problem putting, you know, maybe two 25-pound plates in there. It adds another, you know, 50 pounds. Or a dumbbell or two if you wanted, if you have them. Or just something that doesn't take up a lot of room but it's heavy. You could toss that inside as well just to give it a little bit more weight. I would also recommend bolting it down to the ground. But yeah, there's a lot of safes out there. And something's better than nothing. You can go with a sentry safe. Oh, Gardal. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, we, we did talk about that. I remember, I think it was you who said that you're considering going with that brand. I've never used one of their safes before, but I've never heard anything bad about them. So yeah, there's Gardal, there's Sentry Safe, there's Sturdy Safes, which by the way, I really want to get a Sturdy Safe one day. Those are the big dogs. Those things are enormous. And when I say a Sturdy Safe, that's the name. I'm, I'm not describing it. I'm not saying, oh yeah, it's really Sturdy. No, Sturdy is the brand. Google them if you haven't already. They are expensive, but guess what? In my opinion, at least, the value exceeds the cost. Of course it's expensive, but it's worth it. And if I had the currency to get one of them things, I absolutely would. So imagine filling one of them up with a bunch of silver. My God. I'm going to go to the Sturdy, website, uh, the Sturdy Safe website right now. And I want to see exactly how tall some of these are. Let's see. Sturdysafe.com. Not sponsored, not paid to mention their name at all. Okay, yeah, see, see what I'm talking about? Some of these are 72 inches tall. 72 inches tall. Or it's 60 by 28 by 72. That's a big safe. <laughs> That's a pretty big safe. How heavy is this thing? Let's see. 
Bare minimum, 1,500 pounds. 1,500 pounds. And it could weigh up to... Because there's different variations of the safe that I'm looking at. Which, again, I do not have. I'm not recommending a product that I use. I don't like to do that. Uh, I'm just talking about a product that I would like to use one day. There's different variations of the safe. Uh, and it could weigh up to 2,493 pounds. I would love to get one of those safes one day. That thing is like a... A miniature vault. By the way, I would love to get a vault one day too. <laughs> yeah, safes are really important. And I know that there are some people out there who like to believe that a safe makes you a target. Which is why I've been saying for a really long time, make sure the safe is very well hidden. It could be really wherever you want to put it. Location doesn't really matter, as long as it's obviously out of sight. Preferably as far away from the entrance and exit as possible. But like I said before, if it's a high quality safe, something that... It, and by the way, there is no such thing as a guaranteed safe. There's no such thing as a safe that that that's invincible there's no such thing as a safe that is 100 percent burglar proof but if it's well hidden hard to find and even if you do find it it weighs hundreds potentially thousands of pounds it's bolted down to the floor it's packed with heavy metals silver and gold weighs quite a bit it adds up over time and even if you don't have all that much silver and gold, you can toss in a couple of weight plates. If you have the room, maybe put in a, a couple of 45-pound weight plates. If you don't have that much room, put in maybe a couple of 25-pound weight plates or some dumbbells or whatever, or something else. Something that weighs it down even more on top of bolting it down to the floor and on top of keeping it well hidden. There's a lot of options out there, a lot of different safes out there. I haven't used that many safes over the course of my life. I only have the one that I'm using right now. It's the first safe I've ever gotten. And something else you can do if you have the currency, get another safe and hide it elsewhere. Different part of the house. If you have more than one house, then maybe put the other safe on the other property somewhere. That way, worst case scenario, even if you take all the precautions, it's well hidden, bolted down to the ground, it's incredibly heavy when it's empty, it's even heavier now that you packed it full of, you know, metals and such, and something still figures out a way to go wrong. At least you have the other half hidden elsewhere. That's a little bit extreme, though. I don't know if I would recommend doing that right off the bat. You can if you want. It's probably a better idea to wait until you've made some progress putting a dent in your first safe first. You know, don't go and buy like a $1,000 safe. Put a little, a four little ounces of silver in there and, and then tell yourself that you need to buy a second one just in case. I don't think that's necessary. I don't think there's a right or wrong time to consider buying yourself a secondary safe. But I'm just putting the idea out there since we were on the topic of safes. Thanks to Andrew for asking the question. So yeah, that right there was about an eight minute clip from my most recent VIP club live stream friendly reminder i'll leave the link in the description in case you want to join you can watch the full roughly four hour long live stream and i also do live streams every single week wednesday evenings monthly giveaways daily silver and gold deal alerts and much much more i guarantee you the value exceeds the cost link in the description 
But I wanted to talk a little bit more about safes really quick before I wrap up the video. And the reason for that is because, once again, just to quickly reiterate, I personally believe that a safe is the best way to go. I think a safe is probably the best bet, especially if it's a well-hidden safe that no one is aware of or has access to, bolted down to the ground just in case someone does become aware of it, and there's enough inside to add even more weight to it. And obviously you don't want to cheap out and get this little like $100 save from a store that doesn't exactly sell high quality stuff, but I do believe that something is better than nothing. And something that I have recommended to people in the past, in no way, shape, or form is this a safe, but it's a miniature lockbox. It's super portable. It weighs very little, so you could very easily pick it up and walk out of the house with it if you wanted. It's about the size of a shoebox. And this is actually what I used before I ended up getting myself a proper safe. Back when I only had a couple ounces of silver, I think I had maybe less than 50 ounces of silver at the time. It's when I just got started, and I already had the miniature lockbox, so I figured, hey, you know what? Why not? Once again, something's better than nothing, and you can hide this. You can lock it up. You can put it somewhere. It's where I used to store my camera equipment, memory cards, important documents, passports, and stuff like that. That's what I used this thing for. And I just figured, since I didn't have a safe just yet, this is potentially the next best thing. So I'll leave that linked in the description. It's an Amazon affiliate link if anybody wants to read a little bit more about it or get one for yourself. It's not very expensive. It's something that can hold you over and add a little bit of safety to the stack while you're saving up for a more expensive safe. Because that's another common argument, by the way. A lot of people will say, well, I can't afford to get myself a safe. And if I do buy myself a safe, that's less cash that I have on hand to get the silver and the gold. To be 100% honest with you, I think it's better to temporarily take a step away from stacking to get yourself a safe. Then when you get your cash back next payday, you can get right back to stacking the silver and the gold. I believe it's better to be safe than sorry, no pun intended. I think it's best to keep the money and keep your wealth as protected as possible. Even if you don't believe in safes, figure out another alternative. Figure out something that works best for you. Hiding it in the walls, burying it underground, it's not something that I would personally do, but it's definitely an option. It's something to consider. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. and. If you have a safe for your silver, if so, what are your thoughts on the safe? If you care to talk about the brand, if you want to give a little bit of a review or a recommendation or a recommendation of what not to buy in terms of safes, head on down to the comments and let me know. Or if you have another way of hiding and securing your precious metals. And if anybody's interested in joining the Precious Metals VIP Club, it's where I can do things on my own terms. Not on YouTube's terms. My terms. I'm hosting privately held live streams. They're smaller and easier to manage. I'm posting exclusive VIP-only adventure vlogs. I also do giveaways, discounts, personalized promo codes, shoutouts, deal alerts when silver and gold is on sale on a variety of different websites. And of course, you can watch all of my videos early and commercial free. Come join the Precious Metals VIP Club. It'll be the first link in the description. You're invited. I'd be happy to have you. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. If you guys like me, make sure to hit that subscribe button like a Karen hits a bus window. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content bunch of brand new videos over there. I posted one about China banning cryptocurrency, one about AT&T cutting its dividend, other videos about real estate, videos about silver, videos about gold, and a bunch of others. Go check them out. The link will be in the description. Trying really hard to hit 3
thousand subscribers. We just hit 2,000, and I appreciate that. And if you want to help support the channel in the biggest possible way, please consider getting yourself some DYDSS merchandise. Of course, we have some precious metal themed t shirts and hoodies, which are up for grabs, along with a ton of other products t shirts, hoodies, even stickers, many of which are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations, such as the recently released Kraken Stackin t shirt, hoodie, sticker and coffee mug, inspired by the beautiful two ounce silver Kraken coin, which by the way is helping us raise a little bit of funds and awareness for ocean cleanup charity organizations at no additional cost to you, it comes out of my pocket, not yours. And of course, last but not least, the brand new DYDSS Karen Free Zone t-shirt, hoodie, sticker, and coffee mug. My name is not Karen. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know once again. What are your thoughts on everything shared in today's video? Do you believe in locking up your silver and gold in a safe? Some people don't because they believe it makes you a target, but no one ever said to have the safe in the dead center of your living room or right next to the front door as soon as you step in the house. Nope, 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 nope. It should be a very well-hidden safe. It should be somewhere that no one can find very easily. It should be bolted down to the ground. It should weigh a whole lot when it's empty, and it should weigh even more when you pack a bunch of silver and gold, potentially weight plates or whatever else in there to weigh it down. And I believe it should probably be kept a secret. I don't think it's something that you should be telling all your friends and family members about. It's something that it belongs to you. It's, you know, it's it's like a bank account in a way. You don't tell all your friends and family members your your PIN number at the ATM or, or what your debit card number is or your credit card number. No, that's your financial business. That's That's for you. There's a reason you don't blurt that out for safety and security. Kinda like a safe. Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.